Welcome to worship here in Christchurch Cathedral in Grafton this morning. Special welcome to those that are actually here with us in the building, but a warm welcome as well to those that are joining us uh, from the warmth and the safety of their own home. We're also glad to have you with us as we, as we worship on this eighth Sunday after Pentecost. As always, we're conscious that as we gather in the cathedral, we're gathering on the lands of the Bunjalung Nation, and we acknowledge their long and ancient connection with this land. We honour their leaders and their elders, and we commit ourselves to work with them to create a future for their children and our children to the seventh generation. We're going to stand for our processional hymn, which will be sung by the choir, and then we'll continue with our prayers. We do so, of course, during this time of the COVID pandemic. I was just saying to Camille before, pre-COVID, if there were 10 people sitting here at two minutes to nine, we'd have been devastated. My God, what has happened? Well, what has happened, of course, is the pandemic. And we've been reminded this week, again, from the developments in Victoria and further south in our own state, just how dangerous this virus is. So it really is important, particularly as church people, people of faith, that we take precautions, that we observe the requirements for um, hygiene and stay home if we're not well. And, um, and, and, and of course, as we are able to gather in worship, we, we also come carrying with us in our hearts all those people who are affected by the virus, those people that are working as health workers and in many cases being exposed to the virus themselves. And as well, we pray for our friends and our, each other as we all have family and friends in Victoria and in Sydney, and that the sense of anxiety and worry for them 
touches us all. So all of that is part of what we bring with us as we gather at the table of Jesus. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's, be God's kingdom, kingdom now and, and forever. forever. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to whom Amen. our hearts are open, all desires known, and from, from whom no secrets are hidden, hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting them to the Lord's table. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, confident in God's forgiveness. Merciful God, our maker and our judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy. Sorry, Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
Let us pray. O God, the fount of wisdom, you have revealed to us in Christ the hidden treasure and the pearl of great price. Grant us your Spirit's gift of discernment, that in the midst of the things of this world, we may learn to value the priceless worth of your kingdom and be ready to renounce all else for the sake of the precious gift you offer. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The reading from the book of Genesis 29, verses 15 to 28. Then Laban said to Jacob, Because you are my kinsman, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me, what shall your wages be? Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were lovely, and Rachel was graceful and beautiful. Jacob loved Rachel. So he said, I will serve you seven years for your younger daughter, Rachel. Laban said, It is better that I give her to you than that I should give her to any other man. Stay with me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed to him but a few days because of the love he had for her. Then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife that I may go into her, for my time is completed. So Laban gathered together all the people of the place and made a feast. But in the evening he took his daughter Leah and brought her to Jacob, and he went into her. Laban gave his maid Zilpah to his daughter Leah to be her maid. When morning came, it was Leah. And Jacob said to Laban, what is this you have done to me? Did I not serve with you for Rachel? Why then have you deceived me? Laban said, This is not done in our country, giving the younger daughter before the firstborn. Complete the week of this one, and we will give you the other, also in return for serving me for another seven years. Jacob did so and completed her week. Then Laban gave him his daughter Rachel as a wife. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God.
The Lord be with you. So with you. The gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to, to you, you Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out his treasure, what is new and what is old. When Jesus had finished these parables, he left that place. He came to his hometown and began to teach the people in their synagogue, so that they were astounded and said, Where did this man get this wisdom and these deeds of power? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And are not his brothers James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? And are not all his sisters with us? Where then did this man get all this? And they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor, except in their own country and in their own house. And he did not do many deeds of power there because of their unbelief. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. May these words be spoken and heard in the power of love. Amen. Well, it's another Sunday and we have another text that portrays women as reproductive pawns in the game of life played by men. Jacob had been working for his uncle for some time and he deserved his pay question was, which daughter would he get? So here we have a powerful old man, Laban, trading his daughters like chips in a card game. Yes, I know you want the younger one. She is pretty. But I need to marry off the older one first. Hey, son, spend a week with her, and then you can have the other one as well. But you'll need to work as my unpaid farming assistant for an additional seven years. Not quite two for the price of one, but still 
two young women being traded away by their father as part of a deal with the man they will share as husbands. And no one thought to ask the women, either of them. And then at the end of the reading, we said, of course, because it's what the prayer book tells us to do, hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This week, at least, our hermeneutical bacon is saved by a disclaimer tucked away in the gospel reading. Every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. Matthew 13, 52, which happens to be one of my favorite texts from the Bible, probably because it kind of describes in my better moments what I've spent my adult life doing, studying scripture, learning how to pick out something which is old and something which is new to offer folk. It's a little saying which is unique to Matthew. It's probably something Jesus never actually said, but I wish he had, and I'm glad that Matthew put it into his gospel. As people who are trained, schooled, educated, equipped for the reign of God, what are we to do with a story such as today's Old Testament passage, or last week, or the week before, or the week before that? We're in a series of family stories from the ancestors of Israel. What do we do with stories like this? Do we hide it away in the back of the shed, or do we bring it out as a model for life and family relationships today? Let's think for a moment about the two sisters trapped in this love triangle, assuming it was a love triangle and not simply a power pyramid. First, there's Leah. Leah, the senior sister, the overlooked wife, as the story goes on, the matriarch, the mother of six of the 12 sons of Jacob. What we know best about Leah is that Jacob preferred her younger sister, Rachel. Always. That's a pretty tough gig for any woman. Yet Leah was a survivor in a male-dominated world. She played her part in their father's scheme to outfox the schemer himself, Jacob. And we see that if we read around this story and some of the other uh, stories in the uh, adjoining chapters. Leah was living in the shadow of her younger sibling's beauty, but she flourished as a powerful woman in a family system where her husband had to be shared with her young sister, who he clearly preferred. It was complicated. Life sometimes is, often actually. Check out Genesis chapter 30 for a snapshot, snapshot of a family worthy of a TV drama series as the women prayed and bargained as to who's going to get Jacob to sleep with them tonight. Perhaps we can rescue this text by hearing it as a call for us to honour women who are trapped in unhealthy relationships, not all of whom are blessed with the resilience of Leah to manage their circumstances to their own advantage. Let's also pray for anyone who's been enmeshed in that powerful message we send out about what constitutes beauty and, and who think they should look different, speak differently, or wish they had a different body shape. Then there's Rachel. Rachel, the beloved, the beautiful, drop-dead gorgeous, apparently. A man would happily work 14 years just to gain her as his wife. In the end, Rachel was the mother of Joseph and Benjamin, the only two children she had, and, but they were the two favorite sons among Jacob's many children. Tragically, she died in childbirth at Bethlehem, of all places, 
as she gave birth to Benjamin. A tomb in Bethlehem remembers her, but has itself become a place of violence and hatred and oppression. And I'm left wondering, did Rachel love Jacob as much as he loved her? What value do we put on passionate romance? What makes the beloved other so beautiful in our eyes? After all, they say that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And here we are, a bunch of householders, well trained in picking the eyes out of biblical text and choosing the wisdom we need for today. Week after week, day by day, it's our task to bring out from the store, storehouse of faith some treasure, some piece of wisdom that is just right for the challenges we face in everyday life. Sometimes the scriptures tell us what to think or how to act. More often than not, the scriptures invite us to judge, to discern, to figure it out like Solomon of old. That's particularly the case with parables, but it's often the case with other texts as well. And so we find ourselves pondering what is wisdom? How shall we act? How do we live justly? In this particular situation we're in, what does salvation look like? Where is the good news? And yes, it's complicated, but the core principles are simple. Do no harm, love our neighbours as ourselves, choose life, stay humble. Amen. So let's stand and together affirm the faith of the church as we say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. We come with confidence to offer thanks and to make the requests of our hearts known to God. 
We continue to pray for churches in our local community, across the nation, and especially on the North Coast. We rejoice with the people of, Rock, of Rockhampton Diocese as they prepare to welcome their new bishop, Peter Grice, currently Dean of Geraldton Cathedral in Western Australia. And we pray for Murray, our bishop, Tiffany, diocesan archdeacon, Greg, our dean, and Camellia, our priest. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We give thanks for those who devote themselves to community service and national leadership. And we pray for health care workers as they put themselves at risk while caring for others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We give thanks for the community organisations and service clubs across our valley and give thanks for their contributions to our community well-being. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Your Son sent out disciples to proclaim good news and heal the sick. Look with mercy on all those who, who are seeking healing and grace in their own lives at this time, especially Joy Baldwin, Catherine Douglas, Betty Ford, Jack Hammer, Faye Kelly, Robert Lindley, John McAnally and Muriel Shepherd. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We remember with love Cecil Henry Druitt, the first Bishop of Grafton, Reg Barnier, Alsett Howard, Richard Corbould Warren, and Ron Metcalf. Rest eternal grant to them, O Lord, and, and let that light, light perpetual, perpetual shine upon them. them. Please join me as we say the Cathedral Prayer together. Living and eternal, eternal Christ, bless the ministry of this cathedral as a place of pilgrimage and prayer. May our doors always be open to pilgrims. May our hearts always be open to one another. And may our minds always be open to new truth. Draw us deeply into the mystery of your life, your death, and your resurrection, now and always. Amen. I stand for the greeting of peace. We are the body of Christ. The Spirit is with us. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's offer one another a safe, a COVID safe greeting of peace. It's peace.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All glory and honour be yours always and everywhere, mighty creator, ever-living God. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who by the power of your spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. Therefore, with angels and dark angels, with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever praising you and singing. Merciful God, we thank you for all these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine, and we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. Again, giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shared for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. And looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice all the sins of the whole world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit, unite us in the body of your Son, and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, songs of never-ending praise. 
blessing, blessing and honor, honor and glory, and glory and power are yours forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. As this bread was once many grains which have been gathered together and made one bread, so may your church be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. The gifts of God for the people of God, holy things for holy people, broken things for broken people.
So a couple of quick notices and uh, beginning with the birthday. So on the 26th of July, that's today, Ken Graham is celebrating his birthday, as is Pat Ma. So we send our love to both of them. And on, um, let me think, must be on the 30th, so that's Thursday, um, um, Malcolm McLennan is celebrating his birthday. And next Saturday will be Thea Arsenal's birthday. So love and best wishes to all of those people and those who will be celebrating with them. Of course, the 1st of August is also the, the birthday for the horses, isn't it? So happy birthday to all the horses in the land next Saturday as well. Um, we're all aware, of course, as I mentioned at the beginning, of the concerns that continue about the COVID pandemic. Uh, new public health orders came into effect on Friday we were already compliant with all of them, but one extra thing was we now have to register with the New South Wales Health Department as a, wait for it, a COVID safe business. And so that was done at about 4.30 on Friday afternoon. Otherwise, you would have been turned away at the door because we wouldn't have been allowed to have anybody here this morning. So we've done all that and we're complying and continue to comply with all the requirements. But most importantly, um, if, we, if we can just encourage everybody around us not to be complacent and not to think it can't happen in Grafton. Obviously it can, so let's remain vigilant and careful and act responsibly. The um, total change of topic, uh, still acting responsibly, this coming, this coming, um, saying here Friday, I thought it was Tuesday, but the after, the after school program for kids, which will be actually hosted at the school for the time being as part of our COVID requirements. That kicks off, I think it's this Tuesday afternoon, after school, so get the word out please to those who you know that have children in the younger, 
primary school ages and it will be entirely, for the time being, entirely staffed by um, staff from the school who are connected with the cathedral because the school, as part of its COVID requirements, can't have non-school people coming into the campus. So it's all part of the complicated world we live in at the present time. And the youth group uh, is, of course, kicking off officially this coming Friday and will meet every, Friday, um, every other Friday on a two-week cycle. Um, the other thing I just want to draw your attention to is the, is the inside, in a, in a sense, the last regular page. And I've got a, just a note there about a little coin that I acquired during the week. And I initially thought, oh, I'll take it to church on Sunday and we can pass it around. People can look at it, which of course we can't do <laughs> because of COVID. So just to let you know, there's a little bit of the first century living, and it's not me, there's a little bit of the first century living in the deanery. This is a coin issued by Pontius Pilate, and it was minted in the year 30, the common era. So it's the same year that Jesus was crucified. Okay, so it's a, a little coin that I'm doing some work with, and we use coins like this in the, in the programs with the kids at school to give them a sense that when we're, when we're talking about uh, material from scripture, we're not just talking fairy tales, we're talking about stories which have come to us from people who really did exist and real things happened in a real place. So if you do want to actually see the coin sometime, I'm happy to make it available, but I can't pass it around for us all to touch until the COVID thing is behind us. It's not a relic, it's just an interesting piece of history. People will say that about me one day. All right, let's stand and we're going to enjoy our mission hymn, which will be sung by the choir, then our final prayers and blessing. I have recognised those last few lines. That's a prayer we use quite often at the cathedral. The prayer actually comes from a document called the Didache, which was written just before the end of the first century. So in that prayer and in this hymn, 
we, we're using words that Christians have been using and praying and singing for almost 2,000 years. Living God, in this holy meal you fill us with new hope. May the power of your love, which we have known in word and sacrament, continue your saving work among us. Give us courage for our pilgrimage and bring us to the joys you promise. Most loving God, you send us into the world you love. Give us grace to go thankfully and with courage in the power of your spirit. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.